Okay, so where did we leave off? Excuse me, by the way. Oh yeah. So today we're gonna connect to our API. And first, that means we need to generate a service. It's gonna go into services and it's gonna be called the API service. All right, first let's get the URL. And I'm gonna store it in a private variable called API. We'll also need to inject the HTTP clients. And for that, we need to import it from angular common slash HTTP. And let's just add a method to get all, which will return a HTTP.get. That'll be this.api slash all. And we need to add one thing to our HTTP app module and that thing is going to be the HTTP client module and that will allow us to use the HTTP client in our application. Now to test this out I'm just going to add it to the ngon init. First we need to import it so private API service And we'll call that method, and for now, I'm just going to subscribe so we can console log the response and see what we're dealing with. Okay, what the fuck? Oh, crap. So I put HTTP client module in the wrong place. It needs to be in the imports array and not the declarations array. Okay, now we can see the console, and there's our array of 250 items. And we have quite a bit of things in this object. Now this is where we're going to go to the documentation for the API. We're going to go all the way down and grab this response here. And I'm going to use quick type to generate a type for us. That type file is going to live in its own directory. So I'm going to make a folder for all of the types. And let's also add it. And this could be a d.ts, which is a type declaration file, or a .ts, which is just a normal TypeScript file. Either way is fine, but this is where you're gonna paste all your generated types. And once you do, it'll be all of this. And we're gonna use this throughout our application so that we can access the correct properties of the response object. And for now, I'm gonna designate that get all countries returns an observable of country array. And you can do that with the angle bracket notation on the HTTP get. And at this point, I'm gonna remove the API call from ngon init from our app component and generate some pages. So I want home and a detail page. It's also a component. But both of those components are gonna live inside of a directory called pages. And it, these individual pages is where we're gonna actually call the API service. Now that we have pages, let's add them to the route. So in our app routing module, we're gonna open up this array and add a couple of pages. So for the root route, we want to render the components of home component. And then for the detail page, we'll add it to a path that takes in a route param of country. Now these components will be available to us through the router outlet that we've set up earlier. So let's open up the home component and in here, this is where I want to inject the API service and call that same function. And we're gonna do the same trick with the async pipe. So we'll set up an observable here for the country array. And we'll just set this.countries to equal to the response. Now in the home components, I'm gonna create an outer div for a container, but the inner div, we're gonna loop through it using the ng4 directive. So we can do let country of countries. And of course we need to use the async pipe. And just to see if it works, let's do country dot name. And in our app, here is basically everything that comes back. Now obviously it would be a good idea to make the country card its own component instead of just adding it here. So we'll generate a new component and I will call it country card. And we can open that up. Uh, let's open up the TypeScript file first. And we don't actually need the constructor or on init. This will be essentially a functional component. So all it will take is an input of country of type country. 
And in the templates, instead of rendering country card works, we'll make a div. We'll have an image of the flag, just a header for the country.name. And we'll add three paragraph tags for the attributes that we want to display. So that will be population, region, and capital. And I think before adding this to the home component, we'll need to add an ng if here, just in case country is undefined. So in the home component, we get rid of this div and replace it with the app country card. And we need to provide the country, so we'll set it equal to country. And there we are. Um, there's one thing that we need to fix, which is this population here does have the commas for each thing. So we can add another pipe to population. So we got the number pipe that Angular provides us, and we just need to give it an argument of just like the unit value. So now we have the commas for each thousand, which is the intended result. There's one more thing I want to add, which is I want each country card to be a router link, and it's going to be two slash country name, and that will bring us to the detail page, which right now I don't think works. So if we just click this, we all we get is detail works. So let's work on this. I think the appropriate thing is we need to update the API service and provide another method. This one is going to be get country by name, where we provide the name, which is a string. The route that we want to hit is going to be slash name slash name. <laughs> as confusing as that could be. Now there's one problem. I know this because I did this ahead of time. But what get country by name returns to us is an array with only one item in it. And we actually want to fix that. So we'll add the pipe operator here. So we can remap the observable and get that very first array item. Which you could do like this, but I'm going to do some array destruction inside the arguments. And it's red because it doesn't know what it is. So let's specify that get gives us a country array. And that should do it. All right, that's a lot of files open. So let's use this function inside of our detail component. We'll follow the same steps. So we need the API service. We're also going to need something else. And this is unique to the Angular router. We get access to the route by using the activated route and inject it. And then on init, we could access the params of the route. Now, params is an observable, so we'll have to subscribe. And with that params, we can call get country by name and provide the params.country. Because country is going to be the parameter that we set up earlier. Uh, basically, this thing in the path. And I don't like doing nested subscribes, so we'll store the observable in a variable inside the class. The country dollar sign will equal to that. And be sure to use this dot. And the detail templates, we need to access the the value inside of the observable. We'll pipe it through the async pipe, but then we'll assign that value to a variable that we're gonna, just going to call country. And just to test everything out, let's just try to render the flag. So here's our application. Let's just click on Albania. And there's our flag. Okay, so I don't remember what information we need on the detail page. So let's see, we need native name, population, region, subregion, capital, top level domain, currencies, and languages, and border countries. That seems easy enough. Let's let's add them in. So before anything, I'm gonna add the back button, which is accompanied by an icon, a font awesome, FA, arrow, left. We need a header for the country name, and then a long list of paragraphs with the format of a bold label and the property name. So native name, population. And remember with the population, we want to pass it through the number pipe. So we get the decim or the commas. Next is region, subregion, capital, top level domain, currencies, and languages. That's quite a bit of stuff. But there is a little bit of a problem. We have object object here. So let's console log the observable 
And I'm going to add a pipe here just for utility. We'll use the tap operator. And tap is an operator that basically just does the thing. And you don't have to return anything. So the observable stream is uninterrupted. So in our console, language is, is an array of objects. But we just want the name. And the same thing goes for the currencies. We just want the name. So what I'm going to do is create two utility functions or methods for display currencies and display languages. And both of them will take in the currency and language arrays respectively. And all we really need to do here is map over the currency, to return the name, and then join that array of strings with a comma. And the same thing goes for display languages. This way in our HTML, we can just call that function for display currencies and display languages. Now in our browser, if we get rid of this thing, both of them are displaying current correctly. Uh, Albania is a bad example because there's only one of each. All right, we didn't add that back yet. All right, that's fine. I'll do that in a bit. Let's instead go to something else like Afghanistan. And here there's three languages, so they're being concatenated correctly with the commas. Now there's one last thing that we need to add, which is these border cities or border countries. And unfortunately in the response object, we don't get the border country names, we get the country codes. So we'll need to access the API service again and create a new function. Get countries by codes, which takes in an array of strings, and we're gonna return a get. But what was the URL for this? All right, so here it is: list of codes. And we could use one endpoint for multiple codes, which is great for us. And all we have to do is separate it by a comma, and the endpoint is alpha. So it'll be this API slash alpha. And then we provide a query param of codes. And then I'm going to add another interpolation and join that array of strings by a semicolon. Now, this is going to be a little tricky when we go into the rnet. We want to get the main country first, and then after that, do the request for the border countries. So after this tap, I'm going to add into the pipe the operator of merge map. And merge map is the Observable equivalent of a promise that then we just have to make sure that we return an observable. So you could do that with the of operation that also comes from RxJS uh, res, and there might be a better, more elegant way of storing all the border countries. But I'm just gonna store it in another observable, which is gonna be an array of country, and do this dot border countries equals to get countries by codes a res dot was that property borders and this is red because we need to make sure that we have a proper return type oh okay well that is because I put this in the wrong place so we need to we need to move this down there we go. Make sure that the tap and the merge map are separate operations. And now in our template at the very bottom, we'll make another div here, pipe border countries into async so that we could set that to a variable. And then we're going to loop through border countries and get each iteration of the border country. And I think all we need is the name, right? So that should be good. And then here is all of that. Oh, we need the label. So I think I could just add this here and say border countries yeah there we go so this video is getting a little long so i think i'm going to end it here we did do a lot we set up an observable stream to get all the data and display the correct data in the next video i think we'll start on styling we'll definitely start with a detail page because it's going to be a lot easier but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you all next time